Good evening. It is 5.30 on Wednesday, December 1st, 2021, and this regular meeting of the Sandpoint City Council is now called to order in the Council Chambers at City Hall, 1123 West Lake Street in Sandpoint, Idaho. For the record, I'm Mayor Shelby Ronset presiding. Also present are Councilors Shannon Sherman, Deb Rule, Joel Espiro, and Kate McAllister. Councilman John Darling and Andy Grote are absent this evening, and we will now rise to recite the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Before we proceed with our agenda this evening, I'd like to announce that an amendment to the agenda was proposed and posted yesterday. Because the amendment was made after the agenda was originally posted in less than 48 hours prior to the meeting, the amended agenda, can, agenda cannot become fully effective without a motion and vote from Council. With that, I would entertain a motion to approve the amendment to the agenda with the removal of item 8A, request for fiber optic system franchise. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. So moved and seconded. This will be a roll call vote. Councilman Espero? Yes. Councilwoman Rule? Yes. Councilwoman Sherman? Yes. Councilwoman McAllister? Yes. Okay, are there any announcements from council? I yeah. would like to make an announcement. Um, one, I just want to acknowledge the passing of a Sandpoint icon, Dan Hall. He and his family really kept our history through their beautiful photos, and I know that I will sorely miss him. And on a positive note, I would love to thank the Sandpoint firefighters who brought Santa Claus to Jeff Jones Square for the tree lighting last Friday. I really appreciate that. And the kids love it. Any announcements from staff? No, Mr. Mayor. Okay. We'll now proceed with the public forum portion of the meeting this evening, which allows the public the opportunity to address the council and myself regarding items listed on the consent calendar or on any topic not listed on the agenda. This is not the time to speak on specific items listed on the agenda. If you'd like to speak on such an item, please wait until we announce that item during the meeting. To accommodate both those who wish to speak on general items during public forum, as well as those who wish to speak on specific business items on our agenda, a total of 20 minutes will be dedicated to the public forum at the beginning of the meeting. If you'd like to speak and did not have an opportunity to do so, we will give everyone the opportunity to speak by reopening the public forum at the end of our regular agenda. Before we proceed with public forum, I will take just a moment to recite the rules and procedure for public comment during Sandpoint City Council meetings, both during public forum and for other opportunities to speak during the meeting. Please note, if you're attending by Zoom, you will need a working microphone in order to participate. You'll need to use the raise your hand option if you'd like to be, to be called upon to speak. When your name is called, you'll see a prompt on your screen to unmute. You'll need to press or click the unmute button in order to be heard. For those participating in person, if you wish to speak, you'll need to complete a sign up form and hand it to the city clerk. The forms are at the back of the room by the door. In the interest of time, please do not repeat prior comments made by others, but simply state your support for those comments. Comments shall not be personally derogatory, nor shall they be directed at any individual person, uh, organization, or business. Public comment opportunities during meetings are for comments only. Do not uh, direct any questions to the mayor, council, or staff, and please do not approach the dais. If you have any materials for council, you may hand them to the clerk up front. Each speaker will be allowed three minutes. Is there anyone who would like to speak during the public forum portion of the meeting this evening? Madam Clerk, is there anyone online? Mr. Mayor, it does not appear that anyone online wishes to speak. Okay, that concludes the public forum portion of the meeting this evening, and we will now proceed with the consent calendar. For the record, the total amount of bills is $119,903.91 for regular payables. Are there any items council wishes to remove from the consent calendar? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion that the consent calendar be approved. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, is there any discussion? This will be a roll call vote. Councilwoman McAllister? Yes. Councilwoman Rule? Yes. Councilwoman Sherman? Yes. Councilman Spurrow? Yes. Motion. Can, can I? Oh, sorry. 
Can I that just motion passes, but yeah, go ahead. I just want to say I really appreciate staff that um, and Cheryl that you're repurposing some of these things to the nonprofits and to the school district and to the Envision Center. That really means a lot to those organizations. And I just really want to thank you for doing that. Um, so. Thank you, Councillor. Appreciate those comments. <clears throat> the final item on the agenda this evening is consideration of acceptance of Holly Troxell to act as disclosure counsel for a water bond finance refinancing. Although bond counsel has already been approved, the SEC requires separate disclosure counsel for bond refinancing. Sydney Administrator Jennifer Stapleton will provide a brief presentation for us. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't know that I have as, um, as much to add on this beyond what is in the, the staff report. We've talked to council about the opportunity to refinance some water bonds, pay off a water bond, and it ultimately we are looking at savings between a million, probably closer to $1.5 million for our water rate payers. So that makes a difference, especially when we are doing a rate study. At a, the previous council meeting, council approved an engagement letter with Maura, Laura McAloon with McAloon Law Firm to serve as our bond council for the refinancing of our bonds. With uh, this round, we are looking at going to the um, public municipal bond market, which we haven't done uh, in the past as a city just because of our size, um, because of our um, we haven't been to a point where we had a credit rating to um, due to size and finances to really um, go to the open bond market. We've traditionally gone through USDA financing or through the Idaho Bond Bank. So this will be our first time going to the open municipal bond market. And in addition to bond council, the SEC now requires that there actually be separate disclosure council. And if council has any questions, uh, Chelsea Porter is available electronically and she's with Holly Troxel and Andy also can answer any additional questions council may have. Council? Yeah. Um, I had some members of the public come to me and um, ask questions relative to um, moving away from the, I believe it's the Idaho bond authority that we have used historically and how does that change the risk they were is there a greater risk in going out into the public market for the refinancing? Um, if you could speak to that, please. Uh, and I don't know, Chelsea, if you may have some perspective on this too, but uh, in, uh, typically when we are, when we're going to the Idaho Bond Bank, it's because um, there is enough risk associated that we don't believe on our own that we could get good bond financing. So you're in with a number of other cities in order to be able to um, have the best financial position in order to give you a strong bond rating. Um, where we are as a city with the number of users in our utilities, the revenue in our utilities, our management at the city, our financial position at the city, um, what we've been advised is that we would uh, get much better financing on the open municipal bond market as opposed to going to the bond bank at this point in time where the city is um, like larger municipalities up and down the state. If we were to go through the bond bank, actually what we would have is it would be smaller municipalities um, with that wouldn't be able to get a bond rating on their own, really taking advantage of our bond rating, as opposed to us taking advantage of another city's bond rating like we've been able, or a collective pool like we've been able to do in the past. So um, in terms of risk for us, uh, there isn't an increased risk going to the open market relative to our financial position, responsibility for the bonds, and we believe it would save tax or save ratepayers dollars going to the open market. Chelsea, is there anything I might have missed with that, or Andy, you want to add? No, I think that summarized it really well. And and given the size of this issue, um, you can go on your own. A lot of times, people go through the bond bank because of the amount of debt that they're issuing, and here because you um, are issuing a fair amount, you can go on your own. Okay, that clarifies it because I don't personally know enough about all of that to understand it and explain it back to somebody. Thank you. And Mr. Mayor, if I if I might add uh, as well, just for the public's benefit, um, that may not have been for prior council meetings. This is 
refinancing of existing debt as opposed to taking on new debt is so that we're talking about refinancing with this action. Thank you, because I also got that question. <laughs> okay, any other questions from council? Is there anyone in the public that would like to comment on this matter? No, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to approve the resolution for water bond water bond refinancing engagement letter for disclosure council. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? This will be a roll call vote. Councilwoman Rule. Yes. Councilwoman Sherman. Yes. Councilwoman McAllister. Yes. Councilman Espero. Yes. Motion passes and this meeting is adjourned at 541.